Hey everybody, welcome to another video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you this look today that's really nude and brown focused, um, ending with kind of a deep nude lip and mostly focused on the technique I used for my skin today, which was mixing a full coverage foundation in with a tinted moisturizer and adding a couple of beauty oil drops. And I really hope you like this look, really hope you like this video. So go ahead and stick around and see how I got this look today. To get this look started, I am as always gonna go in with some primer. My face has already been moisturized and prepped. So the next step after prepping is always priming. I'm going to go in with my Laura Mercier primer. This is the Smooth and Blur primer. And I've been a fan of this one. I don't know for sure whether it'll be a go-to. Um, I definitely need to try some more, but so far I definitely have been pretty happy with it. Although since I don't wear a ton of makeup, I haven't really been able to do any wear tests with this because I usually only wear makeup for a few hours at a time, if I do wear makeup at all. <laughs> um, I know it's odd that I have a beauty channel and a beauty account despite not really wearing makeup often, <laughs> um, but it's true for my everyday, I tend not to. Um, so using this primer, um, I haven't really been able to tell whether it helps the makeup stick a lot. But as you can see, I'm just putting a little bit on the back of my hand and then dotting it around my face to make sure I get some even coverage. And then I'm just blending that into my skin. There are a lot of different types of primer and a lot of different techniques. So if you wanna hear me talk about primer more, <laughs> definitely check out my video on different types of primers. Um, and let me know if you want me to do a video on any more types of primers. Now, while my primer sets, I'm going to do my brows. So I'm gonna start out with a spoolie and brush through my brow hairs to kind of get them in the right position that I want them to be in. And I'm going to do the same brow technique that I've been using. So I won't spend too much time on these. I'll kind of speed it through and you can watch one of my other videos if you wanna know how I get this brow look. Now that my brows are done, I'm gonna go ahead and move into my eyes. And I know I usually do face first, but today I'm gonna be doing eyes first because I've seen a lot of my favorite YouTubers do that. And um, I think it's a good look to be able to do their eyes first and then clean anything up later. So I'm gonna be doing that today. Now I'm not gonna be using an eyelid primer like I usually do. Um, I'm gonna be going in with a tiny, tiny bit of concealer and I'm like I did to carve out my eyebrows I'm using my elf hydrating camo concealer with a satin finish and this color is medium peach so I'm going to just dot a tiny bit on those eyelids and then I would use a beauty blender but today I'm just gonna go in with this little blending brush that I used again to carve out my brows and I'm just gonna blend that in and then I was watching a Robert Walsh video the other day and he mentioned um, about setting your eyelid primer or your concealer that it's kind of an unnecessary step that your eyeshadow can pretty much act as that set setting agent as that setting powder I'm just bringing this up and blending out a little bit more where my eyebrow carving didn't quite blend in fully. Um, so I'm going to be using that technique today where I just use my shadow as my setter, kind of my setting powder for my eyelids. Now for my eyeshadow, today I really wanted to do a nude look to be able to show you guys some new nude lipsticks that I got. So for shadow, I'm gonna be going in with my Nubian palette from Juvia's Place. Um, really beautiful 
nudes and browns. So I think I'm gonna start with this. I think I'm gonna start with this shade right here. And I'm gonna go in with a Morphe, um, I think this one's a crease brush. It's the Morphe E17 um, that I know is really popular. And then I'm gonna go in to my socket there and then just start to blend the shadow out. And another thing I learned from the Robert Welsh video that I was watching um, is not to take your shadow up too high when you're first applying it that the best thing to do is to apply some concentrated pigment right here in your socket and then blend it up to the area that you want. Because if you start too high up on your brow bone, then that doesn't leave you a ton of area to be able to blend. And his caveat was that if you have a ton, a ton of eye space to be able to play with, then you don't have to worry about is that, <laughs> then you don't have to worry about that as much. Um, so, that's something um, to bear in mind. I do have a fair amount of eyelid space. Um, my eyes are frankly huge. So I um, have been kind of placing it a little bit higher. Um, but today I'm trying to go for a little bit lower of a placement so that I can blend up. So you'll see when I go in with some of my darker colors that I'm really gonna try to keep it here, that kind of socket area. Um, but right now I'm just kind of laying down a pretty transition shade. Um, and this one isn't nude. It definitely has an orangish hue, um, that you can pick up on camera a lot more than in person, I'm sure. But, um, I'm going to pay particular attention to blending out because that's something I've noticed that I think looks okay in person, but shows up a lot on camera is blending that if you haven't buffed your edges out like this, um, that it shows up really strongly. So without taking any more product, I'm just going to go in over what I've already placed and blend it out a good amount. And you don't want to do this with your darker pigments, um, but for your transition shade, it's good to bring it up, um, not to your brow bone, or I'm sorry, not all the way up your brow bone. Um, I'm trying to go for a more lifted look lately. So my brow bone is actually here but my eyebrows I've taken up a little bit further. I've just like plucked them a ton and I have a good amount of hair so I can like pluck and kind of reshape um, quite a bit. Um, so I'm going in with, again, just a little bit more of this product because I really like this color and I want it to show. And then taking a more precise brush, I'm gonna go in with this Morphe brush. This is the M431 and it's just a nice pointed precision crease brush and I think I'm gonna go in with um, I'm gonna just kind of start to build it up so actually going back to my Morphe E17 and I'm going in to this color right here it's really a shame that these guys don't have names as you guys saw in my Instagram swatching video that they have pretty colors but they don't have any names or numbers associated so i just have to say it's like one from the right um or the third one over on the top row etc so this one has a lot more of a matte finish as opposed to the last one um they look the same on the pan but i would say that the lighter colors definitely have a more satiny finish um which I'm not mad about. I like this. So you'll see I'm just bringing that pigment up and blending it out to soften the edges more. And then I'm going to pick it, pick up a little more of my deeper brown product and then go into the outer corner of my eye, that classic V area. And the difficult thing about my setup is that I can't really see that clearly what it looks like so this looks good to me but on camera again the edges really need to be blended out more so i'm trying to pay particular attention to that now with my thinner morphe for m431 i'm gonna go into 
this darker color here. I don't really love the darkness of the, the, the darkest shade, but I like this one. So I'm gonna go in with that really precision tip and take it right here in my socket and really deepen that area out to give it some nice shadows. So, um, just like with any other product on your face, anywhere that you add deeper brown colors, that's gonna look more like a shadow. So I'll show you before I blend this out why I like this look. So this makes my eyes just seem a little bit bigger. I mean, a little bit deeper set, which I kind of like because it's a little bit more of a dramatic look. Um, definitely not for everybody. I also quite like the look that's just kind of a, a light wash over the eye, but this adds some nice dimension, some shadows and lights, which we'll see as I go in with some lighter shades. Um, but I, I like this look. So going back in with my larger Morphe brush, I'm gonna just go over and blend out the product that I've put in there. And this might seem like you're just kind of undoing what you've done before when you build up with three colors and then you're like, why am I going through and um, kind of blending out this darkest color, but it does leave a nice gradient that might be hard to pick up. But I think that the professional makeup artists who do it, you can definitely see. And so I think it's a good technique to follow because number one, you might not be able to see it, but other people may be able to. And number two, even if you're not that skilled, like I'm not that skilled, um, as you continue using that technique, you'll get better over time and it might become more apparent later on. So you guys know I really like shimmer shades and I think I'm going to go into, it's so hard to tell, I think I'm going to go in with this shimmer shade right here. Um, well, we'll see. I was going to say I think we'll leave it at that before we do the light shimmer shades, but honestly, who knows. Okay, so I'm going to take this flat um, concealer brush actually. I'm going to take this flat concealer brush and just spritz it and um, then pick up that shimmer shade there, that kind of light creamy brown one that I really like there. Um, I like it so much that apparently I've gouged it with my nails a couple of times. <laughs> um, and then in the kind of just to the right or just to the outer edge of the middle of my eye, in this little quadrant right here, I'm going to pack this on and I really like the color that it leaves. So I'm, I want to leave a lot of room for a light shimmer shade in the inner half of my eye. So I'm not going to bring this over too far. I just want to get some really solid pigment in this area right here. And then I think I'm going to go in with a dark matte shade to deepen out the outer V. Alrighty, so I like the shimmer that's on there. I do wanna go a little bit deeper. So instead of adding more shimmers, I'm just gonna go back into that matte color that I had. And I'm gonna add this into the outer V like I did before, but I'm just pressing in the product a little bit more. And then I'm gonna go back in with that flat concealer brush that I had my shimmer product on. And I'm gonna just bring it out a little bit into that corner and then to blend everything out in that outer corner, I'm gonna go back in with my Morphe E17 um, and then just bring it all together. So I've been really enjoying going out kind of to that further edge with some dark shimmers um, when I use this palette or Morphe palette that I really like, um, but I'm not going to do that today. The last couple things I'm going to do are go in with this um, shimmer shade right here that's the upper right, and I'm just going to take a flat concealer brush again that's been spritzed, and this time I'm going to go in with it all the way almost to the inner corner of my eye and then I'm gonna press a little bit harder to blend it into 
the deeper shimmer shade that's in the center of my eye. Now that I'm almost done, I'm gonna go in with this lightest shade in the top left here. And this one is not as shimmery as the other ones, which are really, really shimmery. Um, so I'm gonna wet this tiny little um, precision brush. And I'm gonna go into that top left color, which is just like a really nice light color. Um, and wow, that picked up a lot more than I expected it to. So I'm gonna have to blend that out a little bit. Whew, it's bright. I might clean that up a little bit more when I go in with my foundation and concealer later. And then I'm gonna bring that up to my brow bone for a little bit of a pop. And then I'm gonna take this blender crease brush, this large crease brush to blend out again. And I'm gonna actually bring that over to the inner corner a little bit too, to kind of deepen that out. Um, move the brow bone a tiny bit. Okay. And then it's kind of a mess under here, um, or over here I should say but I'm going to just take a little bit of that shimmer product and kind of pack it in. Um, and then I'm gonna leave it at that. So the next step that I'm gonna take, um, but the last step before mascara, is I'm gonna go in with this darkest color right here. And I'm gonna take a really slim, eyeliner brush and I'm just going to go into that darkest color and press it into my lash line for a little bit of a shadow and as you can see I'm already getting a bunch of shadow that's kind of going into my skin here so that's another good reason to do your eyes before um, so that if you get any fallout you can just brush it away or wipe it away um, without having to worry about it getting on your foundation or your concealer at all. So I'm not gonna wing my liner. I am just going to leave it at this um, because I want it to be a more subtle effect. It may not seem subtle to a lot of people, but it's subtle to me. So for mascara, I'm going in with my Japanese eyelash curler, which again is not my favorite. I don't know why I don't just replace it. Um, so I'm gonna curl my lashes and I do think curling your lashes is an important step. Um, I also think that this lash curler is not good for me because I have really, really stick straight lashes and you can see in a couple of seconds, they just droop down again. Um, so there are some really cheap drugstore options that I think are even better than this, like the CoverGirl one I think is better than this one. But um, for a high-end one, I've said before, the Bobbi Brown Curler is a really good one. There are a lot of good options out there. I would say it doesn't matter, but clearly it does. <laughs> so I'm really just going through trying to get every lash coated. Um, if you wear false lashes, then this step is obviously not quite as important, although you'll hear different opinions on whether it is very important or not to get your eyelashes really nice and separated before you put on your falsies. Okay, so now that eyes are done, um, I'm really happy with how they turned out. Hopefully they look okay on camera. Um, so now that eyes are done, I'm gonna go into my face. And like you saw earlier, I already primed. So I'm gonna go right in with my base products. So I was watching a YouTube video from a beauty blogger who I really like, and she likes this technique of blending a full coverage foundation with a tinted moisturizer and then adding some um, like face oil drops. So I'm going to try that technique today. I haven't tried it before, so we'll see how it goes. Um, so for my full coverage product, I'm going in with my Lancome Team Didal Ultra Wear. And this one 
is SPF 15 sunscreen foundation with up to 24 hour color wear and comfort transfer resistant. And then for my tinted moisturizer, I'm going in with my NARS radiant tinted moisturizer, which I really love. And then for my beauty drops, I'm going in with this um, kind of face oil that's made from raspberry seed. They're illuminating beauty drops made by Body Suticals, and they're with calendula oil. So I'm really excited to try this out. I am gonna start off really minimal with just like that much, yeah, pea-sized amount of my full coverage product. And then I am gonna go in with, I'm gonna go in with my NARS, and I'm gonna do a slightly larger amount with my NARS. And those are also slightly different colors, although they're pretty close. And so getting a little bit of a color mix and match will be good for me. And then um, I'm gonna go in with just a tiny bit at first, like two drops maybe of the, the oil. And then I am going to blend them all together. And this is more product than I would usually wear a little bit more. So we'll see how it goes. But this is supposed to give a really nice, like skin-like finish. And um, that's really what I go for. I have a really big problem with not looking either like I'm not wearing anything at all or looking oily or honestly just the biggest problem is just looking cakey. I don't know how other people do it to where they look so good, but I look cakey instead of glowy and fresh, which is what you want. So um, that's a big problem for me. And I'm really hoping that this new technique will help me avoid that. So I always take the little bit left over on my hand palette and like go under here so that it'll help me not waste product and go out um, like blending down to my chin. So I'm gonna go in with my Morphe M439 blender brush um, and I'm just gonna start to buff this into the skin. Um, like I've talked about before, I saw a video where Wayne Goss did this where he just really really gets in there. Man, I forget that the NARS really dries down like very dark. So this is a little bit darker <laughs> than my skin, but um, matching it to like the rest of me, I think it's not too dark. So I actually really like how that looks on my skin. Um, this might be a new technique that I'm going to use more often. Um, we'll see how it stays throughout the day, but I really like it so far. So for my kind of bronzer contour, I'm going to go in with my nude sticks that I've been using a lot lately. Um, and I'm just going to do a line right here. Kind of lift it up actually a little bit more and the line here. Okay, and then I'm actually going to go in with my Makeup Revolution stick as well. And just add a little bit right there. So that's a little dark for me, but the Bondi Bay Nude Sticks is a little light for me. So kind of hoping it works out. Um, and then non-traditional, I'm just gonna take my finger because I have not really been loving how brushes are working on my cream product lately. So I, I know that the finger technique can leave a lot to be desired, but I'm just gonna do it today and see how I like it. So I think I applied my product a little too low on the cheek because I really wanna push it up, up, up. And if you apply it too low, you'll have a hard time doing that. But again, not being able to see this on camera, I'm a little limited, um, not knowing what you guys see. But I kind of like how that looks. 
really creamy, really pretty. So I'm gonna start over on this side doing the same thing. And one thing I'm gonna start to do is like placing it a little bit higher because my cheekbones, I have a really round face and so my cheekbones go more like this, but I want them to look more like this. So I think I'm gonna start placing it a little bit higher in future. Okay, can't see it super well, but I am not bummed how that turned out. And I am gonna take the brush that comes with the Bondi Bay nude sticks for my nose. Um, just cause it's a little bit faster and I think because I'm not using the darker shade, it looks fine. Um, okay, so now next stop, concealer. Going in with the same e.l.f. concealer I used before and taking a little bit here. Doop. Doop. A little bit here. And yeah, that's it. Um, going in with the same little brush that I used to blend it before. Um, I think I would get better results using a beauty blender for this, but I want to see how it looks when I use the brush. So I'm going to move this up here into my inner eye a little bit more, blend this out down like here. And I think the brush is providing some good coverage, but um, my issue isn't really coverage so much as just needing it to look more like real skin which makeup is never really gonna look like your real skin. I mean, let's be honest, everybody's always gonna be able to tell you're wearing a little something if you're wearing concealer and foundation. Um, and that's just the nature of it. I don't think that everybody should be so concerned with the idea of like no makeup makeup, because um, the fun thing about makeup is that you're able to look like a little bit more enhanced or completely different than you usually look. It's kind of like an art form and nobody wants art that you can't tell is art. I mean, I guess some people do, but um, you know, I'm not kind of one of those modern art people who's like a pile of trash is art. So got a little bit off topic there, <laughs> but um, I don't know. I, I don't mind makeup where you can tell that it's actual makeup. And if I'm going for a no makeup look, it's seriously like very, very, very minimal. Um, I might put on like moisturizer and a little bit of like cheek tint um, and maybe like some mascara and if I'm feeling extra fancy, go in and um, fill in my brows a little bit. But you know, anytime you put these like products on your face like foundation and concealer, I don't think you need to worry about it looking as if you're not wearing makeup. But that being said, I hate the cakey look and so that's why I really like beauty blenders and so I'm going in with this first but then I'm gonna go to a beauty blender afterwards because you can see how cakey it looks already which I don't like at all so I'm going in like this to blend it in the other thing that you know what I am gonna do that the other thing that I've seen beauty blenders do is like <coughs> mist their face with a setting spray and I forgot that this setting spray isn't so much of a mist as like a freaking squirt gun so <laughs> um so that was quite a bit of product and I'm trying to just like let it dry down now but that's something that I've heard is like put your concealer on your face let it sit a little bit but you know what this is like kind of becoming a creamy creamy mess um might not have been such a good idea, you guys. But you know what? You can learn through my mistakes. <laughs> um, trying to clean this up a little bit. And yikes, yeah, my eye, eyelids look scary right now. And I think that might have come down to not setting. And under eyes are just looking real freaky. So I am going to go use a beauty blender and try to keep this mess contained. Okay, so now I have wet my beauty blender. This is the camo concealer sponge from e.l.f. And I'm going in to my under eye and blending this out with the beauty blender, partially to pick up excess product, partially just to reintroduce some moisture because this area is so, so dry. Um, and it always ends up looking cakey, no matter what I do. So I need tips, I need everybody's ideas. Um, 
because even if you can't tell on camera, which I'm sure you can, um, yeah, I don't love it. So I've been trying to do the less is more thing with the product. Um, eh, better, not great, but it is what it is. Okay. So face is coming along. For my cheek tint, I'm gonna use this little Pixie um, cheek stain that is a sheer cheek gel. So I'm gonna just show you on the back of my hand. This one is not so pigmented, actually. So that looks like a lot of product and honestly it might be too much, but um, I found that I have to add kind of a lot to get it to show up. Cause it looks good on the skin when you first put it on. But then like you rub it in and you kind of can't tell that you're wearing anything has been my experience. So maybe that won't be the case today because this looks really nice. I'm liking this. Um, yeah, I think that using my finger today is better for not moving the product around too much. I'm bringing this up to my temples and like above my brow. Um, to warm up my face a little bit, kind of give it that like sun-kissed look. Um, people have been like using blush all over their faces lately and it's kind of an interesting look, but I kind of like it for summer. You kind of just look like you have the tiniest bit of sun on you. Um, and since I do have a tan right now, I think it, it's appropriate. <laughs> um, it would look a little bit weird if I had like super duper pale skin maybe, but you know what, maybe not because it's just kind of like a sweet little like flushed look, no matter what. So, okay, all right. Well, maybe I don't need the uh, tremendous amount of product that is remaining on my hand, um, but you know what, I'll go in with like another layer just because Lately, I feel like my blush has not been showing up at all, and I want it to. I've been really liking liquid and cream blushes, but I really want a powder blush to like go over the cream product with, because if I go over with a, a like translucent, translucent powder, I lose a little bit of the pigment and a little bit of the like nice shiny finish, and so I don't want to like pressed blush with with like shimmer in it exactly um but i want i want some kind of pressed blush that's like a little bit different than just the peachy light tones that i have right now okay so this is the look so far we are almost done i am ready to set i am going to go in with the elf halo glow setting powder um i actually haven't used this guy yet but i'm really excited to so i'm gonna get a little bit of powder <laughs> all over my body I'm going to get a little bit of powder apparently all over myself and also a little bit on my brush maybe. So I'm going to go in and set the areas that I think need setting. Um, I'm going to avoid my main cheek, like upper cheek area and I'm going to put a little bit of powder brush and highlighter on that area and I am making a whole mess on my jeans over here um okay but yeah this is a cool powder so far I don't know um I don't really have big preferences in powders um so if you guys have recommendations or think this one is great or think this one is awful um, let me know. I'll just be over here sitting drenched in powder. <laughs> All right, folks, the last step I am most excited for because I got a bunch of nude lipsticks recently, like seriously about like eight different like products. And I'm going to do a video where I try a bunch of different ones on. So stay tuned for that. But, um, today I think I am going to go, oh my goodness. I don't even know what I'm going to use because there are so many cool ones that I want to try. Um, okay, I think I'm going to do this ColourPop Lippy Pencil. Um, and I actually have used this one already, so it's a little bit dirty. Um, not cute, not cute at all. So, she 
Gucci, like I said, is a lippy pencil. And this shade is BFF number two. Um, you know what? I wish I had a little bit of lip balm right now. Um, okay. So I'm gonna go in with this lippy pencil to line. And I'm not doing overlining or that little like contour thing at all because I don't know how much of a difference that actually makes and overlining can make my lips look kind of crazy. So I might overline a little bit where there's like not that clear of a line for my lips, but mostly I'm not really gonna overline. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is go in with this Milani, I believe. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna use this one. And it's a color statement lipstick in the shade Naturally Chic. Um, it's a super pretty color, so I'm gonna go in. Guys, it smells so good. Okay, so there she is, the finished look. I really like how the finish came out with my foundation and tinted moisturizer being mixed in with my beauty drops. And I'm a huge fan of this nude lipstick. So if you liked this video, definitely let me know what you liked about it and um, what you'd like to see in other videos. And um, like I said, I'm gonna be doing a little bit of like my nude lips collection and showing you which ones I like. So um, hopefully you like that and I will see you guys next time.